Dear Lord, thanks for bringing this podcast together. We appreciate all the people that uh, that listen, that send us comments, that take what they hear and put things into action. I uh, appreciate you helping create the Journey of a Christian Dad podcast community and also crazy cool family. Like It's just so great that uh, you're leading the way and guys are following. So keep helping us, Lord. Uh, allow everything that comes out of our mouths to serve the audience the best way that it can. Bless Don, bless myself, bless the guys that will participate in this call so that we ask good questions, have good conversation, and and share some wisdom, wisdom with the audience, and then allow the audience to hear it and be able to use that in their lives and be a light for others so that we can help people grow closer to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's get this going. So guys, I always say a prayer or the guest says a prayer, and it always sounds somewhat similar to what you guys just heard. So welcome to a recording of the Journey of a Christian Dad podcast and also Crazy Cool Family podcast. So we've got the co-host of Crazy Cool Family with us today. We've got Don Manning. So Don, welcome. Welcome to our show. Hey, thanks so much. Yeah, glad to glad to be here. It's great yeah. to be able to record uh, record something that works well on two different platforms and be able to to source out a couple different ways. So that's what this one's about. This one's kind of a live live deal. We're going to talk about how to win win at family, and uh, we're going to do some Q and A at the end of this one. So uh, we've got some guys that are on this call live with us. So with that said, let me just do a quick intro for Don. Uh, Don is just a really cool guy. Has a heart for God has had some success uh, business-wise, which a lot of us guys aspire to. However, he also recognized that he needed to win at home as well. And winning at home, we'll talk about what that looks like. But uh, of course, we have to provide. Of course, we have to protect. Of course, we also have to humbly lead. And as Christians, our lives and families should look different than the way that the world does. And Don's got some phenomenal examples, and uh, as he says it, uh, he wants to win with all of his kids and help them all get to heaven. He doesn't want to miss the mark there. That one's a pretty important one, so we'll we'll touch on that a bit later as well. So, Don, let's get this thing rolling if you're ready. All right. Yeah, so, you know, and you're exactly right, Dan. I, I remember being a younger dad. Uh, your kids are what ages again? Eight and uh, ten. Eight, yeah, eight and ten, and both ten. daughters. Yeah, two daughters. I remember, you know, I look at my parenting like in decades. I, I'm, this is, I'm on my fourth decade of parenting, you know, and, and I remember being at that end of that first decade going, okay, I got about four kids here, uh, maybe four or five at the time. I'm like, I got to figure out how to win. And, and winning is 100%. I mean, I, I, I can't bat 300, you know, I can't bat 500 because it's going to be a, it's going to be very painful if two or three of these kids don't, um, don't turn out well. And so um, it just made me really think about how, how to win. How, how do you win at this game? You know, we try to, we try to win at our golf games. We try to win at our career. We try to win at, you know, um, whatever we're endeavoring to do. Um, how do we win at family? And so that's, that's what, you know, I, I kind of had a mission about that. And, and I love having these guys on, um, you know, uh, guys, for at first, I just like to, I'd like to ask you guys some questions first. Um, and, and first of all, whether you're on this podcast as a participant, or whether you're listening, I just want to, the, the first thing in winning is you're here. You know, I was, I was just talking the other day with a young a young married guy, been married a couple of years, been a Christian about four years, and he, he'd come from some substance abuse issues. And so he got married in the first couple of years. Um, he was, when his wife was gone, he would delve back into those, uh, those days. And uh, then he wound up um, talking to his wife about it. And so, but, you know, I was talking to him and he said, man, I feel like the first couple of years of my marriage have been a failure because I've failed in these areas. And I said, I said, hey, can I tell you something? And he said, yes. I said, I think you're an all-star. And he goes, and he looked at me like I was crazy. I said, because here you are, you're, you're a baby Christian, you know, three or four years into it. You're two years into your marriage. You fell back into some things. It's not every day, just a few days. 
and you brought it into the light and you're now, and they're having to work through some trust issues in their marriage and stuff. I said, dude, you're in the game. You're, you're playing and you're, you're getting after it and you're bringing things into the light so God can heal it. And I just want to tell every, the dads that are on here with us, as well as the dads that are listening to the podcast, well done. You're in the game. You're in the fight and you're here to learn. You're here to do these things. That's just, that's such a big part of the process. So just for everybody out there that feels beat up as a dad or whether, however you feel, just, I just want to say, well done. You're an all-star because you're in the game and you're trying and God's going to bless that. Does that make sense so far? Um, so I would love to ask the guys here on the question though, just, you know, and um, what does winning at family, you know, we've got everybody from guys that are uh, newly married to guys that are, you know, more seasoned dads. Um, you're kind of in the middle of that, Dan. Um, yes. What does it look like to win at family? Everybody just kind of jump in and say, you know, what does winning at family look like to you? And Mark, have- I'll, Mark, I'll call on you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'd say, you know, winning a family is getting along, obviously. Um, it's big about relationships, um, which is my kind of struggle, just nurturing relationships, especially with my daughters, um, learning. And so winning at family would be them to, to know Jesus and just to be in good communication and good relation with with everybody in your family Mm. spoken well from a single father of six amazing (laughs) there's an amazing story behind there um but yeah what what else what what and let's think about this think of one of your children um imagine them at 18 years old and you're sending them off to college or to work or the mission field or wherever they're going what does that what does that child look like? What's their relationship? What, what do you want to see in your children? And, and what's their relationship look like with God and with you? I mean, I would like to see this like deep confidence, like knowing their dad's got their back, like Jesus has got their back, like they can go and, and take on the world kind of thing. Um, you know, sending them off to college. And I would like uh, this just for them to have that security to know that we always are there for them no matter what. Yeah. Dan, what are your thoughts about that? What, when you look at your, at your daughters and they're 18 years old and, and wherever they're going to go in life, what do you think about in terms of what do you want them to be like? Yeah. Con- confidence is a big one. That's self-confidence and confidence in their faith, uh, that they know what their core beliefs are, their core values, and the world can do what the world does. And they just stay the course. They hold fast to what is good and are comfortable with where they are comfortable with how other people are, how other people treat them and their opinion doesn't other people's opinion doesn't impact my daughters. Yeah. So they just stay the course they know they're the, they're the rock and foundation and they don't have to move for everybody else. They don't have to play everybody else's game. They get to play the game that we're choosing to play as a family. Um, and then that what you talked about on, on the podcast, when you were on, I can't miss, you know, if we're, you know, if we're a batting average and, you know, 300 is pretty good in major league baseball these days, but that's not so good for, not so good for me, you know, I got two. So even if I go 500, that's not good enough. You know, I, I got, I got to have two that I help lay a really solid foundation. I can't leave that to chance. I can't leave that to the private school or I can't leave that to somebody else. So, um, you know, hopefully at that 18 to 22 year old range, they're self-assured that they know they're loved. They know I'm proud of them. They know God also has the same things and that we believe in them and they can accomplish what they want to accomplish. So like, that's a really, really big question. And until we understand the importance of that 18 and on range that we're building the foundation for now, um, like so, so critical that we, 
understand the impact that we're having today for the future. Yeah, absolutely. Jason, Joe, y'all got any thoughts about that? I can throw something in here because I am a non-traditional dad. Um, I don't know if there's many ways you can be a dad that I'm not um, bio, step, kinship, foster, and adopting. Um, so we've got all the different things. And, you know, because the vast majority of my kids are what you would call non-neurotypical kids, one of the things I've had to learn is that success for me doesn't necessarily look like what it does for everybody else. For us, sometimes it's just learning to, to be patient, understand to the best of our ability what they're going through, and then model for them what we would like to see them grow up in. And if, if we want to see them grow up in any kind of a, a godly way, we have to model that in the hard places. And man, that's, that's been a big struggle for me over the years. You know, if you get kids like, you know, we've got kids with all the diagnoses. And so being a patient dad, when you have a kid who's, you know, who's got ODD, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, you know, yeah. God had a good giggle watching me go through that period when we had a kid with us <laughs> ODD. And uh, yeah, it, it, so, so for me, it, it looks a lot different, but it's really, I think, just understanding where your kids are and then coming to meet them at that place and understanding where you are so that you, you can build the, you know, be the man that you're supposed to be to model that for them. And some of the kids we've had, we've had close to 30 kids to our house. Some of the kids won't ever remember you. Some of them you might've only known for a few days, some of them for longer than that, but it's just that little window of time that you have a moment to speak into a kid's life and show them what a father truly is supposed to be. And that's, that's what, what I've learned on my journey over the last 20 something years that I've been a dad. Dan, that sounds like a whole nother podcast. I mean, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. That's a good, that's a, you know, and we all, it just goes to another thing is, is that uh, I think it brings up a great point in that winning at family looks different for every family and for every kid. Now there's themes. I think we that you know even what uh, Jason's saying there is he still wants to impart things to them, and I bet he would agree that we want to have confident kids and kids that love Jesus and all that. But what it's looking like for you know I've had seven di- you know, I've got seven different kids, and and they all the success for them all looks different, and um, and and does my version of winning for this kid is is different even within my boys and girls it's just different so I totally I love that 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 um you know some of it is and and that's why I wanted to bring up the question is because how do we define winning you know when I was in that that first end of the first decade of parenting I'm going okay what does winning look like you know how do I define the if if I'm going to learn how to win at family does winning mean that we're achievement oriented? Does winning mean that we're perfect? Uh, does winning mean that we obey all the rules? You know, and I found out that that really wasn't what I wanted. It was more about that connection and relationship and confidence and things. And, you know, and I found that it was super hard as well. You know, that it was, um, you know, it's, I love it what you're saying, Jason, that it's it's just it's about, uh, man, if God giggles, what, I mean, I feel like God giggled a lot as he watched me learn how to parent, that God giggles a lot when he watches me learn how to be married. Still, even after 30 years of marriage, I think he still looks at it and goes, wow, he's kind of like Peter. He just doesn't quite get it a lot, you know, <laughs> and and maybe, maybe in the fourth decade, he'll finally wind up getting some of this marriage stuff, but uh, in fact, you know, it just makes me think about, you know, when I was, uh, when I was in college, <clears throat> I played, I found some, I went to the University of North Texas, and some of my buddies at UT and at a and were playing handball, and if you ever played handball, if you ever played handball, it's like racquetball, except you use your hands, and in a, in a, in a, it's on a racquetball court, and so, um, so I, found, I thought, man, I want to learn how to play handball, and I couldn't find anyone at the University of North Texas that played handball, except for I finally asked around and they had these, um, these old guys and they old guys, they're my age now. So they were old guys to me then. And they said, there's some professors, these older guys, professors that play handball every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at five o'clock at this, at this racquetball court over here. And so I went there thinking, okay, it's, it's, I might learn from these guys. It's going to be, you know, I'm going to go in here. I'm 20 years old. I'm, 
a better athlete and all this. And first game I went in there and got beat 21 to nothing. I mean, they had no mercy for me whatsoever. And these, these old guys, they knew how to play and they knew how to move and knew how to make the shots. And I had no idea how to do anything. Thought I did, but I didn't. And so um, I just, but, but then uh, I, I kept coming back and I would uh, come back and I'd get to 21-3 and then I'd get to 21-7. And over the course of several months, I started winning some games and, you know, it was just coming back over and over, learning from those old guys and then applying what I've learned. And over time, I became a decent handball player, you know, and I'd go play tournaments and stuff and I got better and better. I feel like that's what we're doing with family. You know, that we're, we're, um, we, we need to get, find mentors. We need to find resources because we don't know what we're doing and, and learning how to parent when we're, our kids are five is different when they're 10 and when they're 15. And so, um, you know, um, that's, but, but the cool deal is, is that every dad can win at this game. You know, there's, there's, through the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Lord, everybody can go into that handball court and come out a winner. And, and, and what does winning look like? I mean, you guys have described it, our kids. It's not about the performance. Performance will come when confidence is there. Performance will come when connection to God is there. Performance will come when relationship is there. And that's what we're shooting for. And, and I'll tell you, too, there's another thing I tell dads a lot. It's worth it that, uh, you know, we think that we need to pursue our career and that's worth it, or we need to pursue our golf game and that's worth it. But today I'll tell you, I got seven kids, 32 to 16, four sons-in-laws and, you know, three about to be four grandkids. The tsunami of grandkids is about to come. And uh, cause all my girls are married now, they're about to start, you know, but, but it really is, I mean, they're about to come into the house. We're about to celebrate the graduation party for my sixth kid who's um, who's graduating from high school and all the family will come in. And it's just so cool when you have a family that's connected, when you have kids that love Jesus and it's it's worth every bit of effort. It's worth everything they do. It really is, you know, what we call crazy cool. And so today, what I'd love to do is to help younger dads that's what our ministry is all about we just try to help you win the war because it is a war and you know we are on the battlefield and so um i remember being at that stage where you know where i was talking about kind of where you are dan in your world and just saying okay i wish someone would give me a guidebook i wish someone would give me like a manual for this journey that a vision if you will to see what I should focus on and what I shouldn't focus on, what's important and what's not. Because at that time, and this was, show you how old I am, I didn't even have a, maybe a, maybe I just had a cell phone and we had dial up internet. So we were reading books and going to seminars and I said, I wish somebody would just do that. And so that's what, um, so years ago, my wife, Suzanne and I, we decided to write that guide. And that's really what Crazy Cool Family started because I wanted to give younger parents a guidebook, you know, that said, here's what God thinks is important about family. Let me take all the things we've learned raising seven kids over 30 years and say, do this and don't do this. But, but it's not about rules. It's because like, you know, like uh, Jason was saying, we all have different kids and we all have different journeys and everything's just so different. How do we, how do we do a guidebook? It's like, you know, we have to do a guidebook, but, but somebody's climbing Mount Everest and somebody's climbing this mountain and somebody's doing this because it can't be a bunch of rules because and honestly God's not about rules it's just but so you know what I want to do today is take these young dads and and even a couple guys that are not even on the dad journey yet or just in the marriage piece of things and say um, let's just take a few minutes and 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 go over what we found are the the secret to creating a winning family and, and, uh, and so if that's okay, guys, we're going to take about, about 15 minutes. And so what I'm going to do is take about 10 to 15 minutes of something that, um, that really you, you'll need to learn over 10 years. So, you know, you, you start out with the basics, but a, as you know, Dan, you know, think about how, what you've learned in parenting in the last five years, would you say that that's, you know, um, 
gone, where, where were you in parenting five years ago versus where you are today? Uh, night and day difference. Yeah, <laughs> night and day and, difference. And, but did you learn it all in a weekend conference? Oh, absolutely not. And, no. and why? Uh, it, the practical application. And then at the same time, as soon as you figure something out, the dang kids grow, <laughs> they change, they keep changing. Yeah. It's then like, gotta, it's like going into that handball court. You know, I, I, I learned one shot and then I had to learn something else. I mean, I'm watching the NBA finals right now and it's crazy how many, you know, you think about shooting a jump shot, but yet then look at all the shots they shoot in a game, all the different types of shots that they had to learn over years. And, you know, and, and this player can't shoot that shot comes back next year. They can, because they work on that. They keep adding to their game. Um, I think that's the way parenting is. That's why I use the analogy of that handball court, because we got to keep going back and learning and learning. So today I'll just give you this overview, but we'll, but really if we can remember what I'm going to give you three commitments, six words, that you can remember for the rest of your life. And if you'll keep moving in the direction of these words, you will have, and, and it's what uh, Devin was already, was just talking about with his six kids that he's already doing it. And what you're already doing, Dan, where there's so much we're doing already, but we're just gonna try to, 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 um, to crystallize it, if you will, into, into a, 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 a guidepost, if you will. So six words, and it really comes down to this. Pursue God, build relationships, create culture. Pursue God, build relationships, create culture. Everything's going to come out of those six words. Everything you do in family is built off that framework, a successful family, like we're saying, where kids love Jesus, love each other, and, and, are, and are connected. And, you know, so I'll just walk through these real quick with you. One, one is just pursue God. Pursue God first. Um, and let me just give you some statements that'll bring this to light to you. The best fathers are first sons of the king. The best fathers, in other words, how you, if you're an angry person, you're going to be an angry parent. Because you see, I mean, like the best thing you can do for your family is to give them the healthiest version of you. Would everybody agree with that? It's not about, if I'm healthy, if I'm a healthy person, I can be a healthy parent. If I'm a healthy believer, I can be a healthy parent. That's why the first thing we talk about is pursue God. Because many times parents say, hey, go fix my kid. But until you're willing to fix yourself, your kids aren't likely to be fixed. And the same way is because, but here's what happens because, and ever, I think all these dads here would agree with this, your example is more important than your instruction. What you do is more important than what you say. And so in the last statements, this is that who you believe you are determines what you do. Your identity in Christ to, to determines what you do. If, if I believe I'm loved, I will love others. If I'm filled with love, love will flow out of me. And really, we... We know this is true because Jesus said it was true. In Matthew 22, he said, they said, hey, Jesus, what was most important? And what did he say? He, he didn't say it was most important to go lecture your kids. He said, it's most important to love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And so if it's most important to Jesus, it's most important to us. And so we put pursue God as the, our most important relationship in life and we will only go as far as a parent as we are first a son of the king does all that make sense yeah absolutely yeah and so it, it's it's simple and you know it, what it does it, it's a game changer because people who love the lord are more confident they're more adventurous i mean think about it. you tell your family hey we're going on a journey with jesus and because you're already going on a journey with jesus you know, and it really helps. Most dads have such problem with anger and, and anger is taken care of at the cross. Anger can be, you know, and then most dads have such a problem with relationships. Relationships are learned through your faith. And so it makes you more patient, more joyful, more loving. Everything comes down to pursuing God first. But the second thing is, is like it. The second thing is build relationships. And and so 
And all we did was of all the relationships in your home, we took the relationship to God and put it at the top. But then, and when you are good with God, then it, it allows you to, to really connect with all the relationships in your home. And so let me give you some statements there too. If you focus on the inside, the outside will take care of itself. That's a fundamental shift that ever, the, the goal of parenting is to move from parent control to self-control. I mean, dads, do y'all, I mean, would y'all agree with that? You don't have to respond, but I mean, would you rather have to control your kid their whole life or would you rather have them make wise decisions as they get older? And yet, so often we, our actions demonstrate that we want to keep parent control when in reality, we have to work towards building self-control. And we do that through the power of relationship because we want to connect with them first and then connect them to God. Um, how about this statement? The easiest kids to raise are kids that love Jesus. <laughs> you know, I, I tell parents all the time, I got seven kids and parenting's the easiest thing I do every day. It's easier than work. It's easier than, than uh, a lot of things. Why? because I'm connected to my kids and my kids are connected to Jesus. And so therefore it's not that hard to parent them. And when they weren't in either way, which has happened at times, parenting becomes super, super hard because the connection's not there. When the connection's there between me and my child and my child to Jesus, then everything flows and everything. That's why Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden's light. Because when that happens, when we're connected to God, it seems like there's this flow to life and a flow to family that happens through the power of relationship. Because here's what happens. Here's the next statement. Real change happens at the belief level, not at the behavior level. When you really want, if you really reach the heart of your child at the belief level, if, if they believe in doing the right thing, then they're going to behave by doing it the right thing. Um, you know, when we, when we start to see that our goal in parenting is not to create behavior, but to create connection and trust and inspiration with our kids, that's when we become an awesome father and an awesome husband as well. Um, so going back to pursuing God, we work on becoming the healthiest version of ourselves. And then we can help our kids become the healthiest version of, and our spouse become the healthiest version of themselves. And dads, wouldn't y'all agree that controlling things is exhausting? It's absolutely, making everybody follow the rules all the time, especially when they don't want to, is absolutely exhausting. But connecting and inspiring becomes rewarding, becomes effective, and becomes fun. You know, Dan, you were talking about coaching your kids. Isn't it easier to coach a team that, want, that wants to do it? And, and, and understands what to do and does it without having to just always be on them all the time. <laughs> so Don, funny thing, you talk about coaching the kids. Yeah. One of my, uh, one of my buddies locally happened to be the coach on the other team. I didn't know it when we showed up to the field. I'm like, Oh man, I really want to win this one. <laughs> yeah. And one of his and his team beat us. And one of the coaches on the other team after the end of the game ran over to talk to me. And he says, your team is the best coach team that I've seen. Like they understand the game. It's our first year together and everything. And that just meant the world to me that he said that. And what I took from it wasn't that I'm the greatest coach because I am not. It was the fact that we focus on details and I look to inspire them to want to be good. Yeah, to want to pay attention and, and that type of thing. So what you said there with easy to raise parent, easy to raise kids that love Jesus, easy to raise kids that are looking to do the right thing. So if we're planting those seeds like you're talking about and working towards the outcome we want, working towards the spot in life that we want, yeah, absolutely. So right. and so often, you know, I love that analogy because. So you said what we worked on is to inspire them to want to learn, to want to do right. So often we're so concerned about teaching them the, the, the fundamental of what we're doing. And even that gets too complicated. I remember when my kids were playing baseball, it's like, I remember one of my mentor coaches said, just teach them how to hit. 
at first just teach them how to hit and teach them to want to hit and, and have fun with them because, you know, everybody else was like, no, they need to learn to hit the cutoff, man. They're not ready for that, you know? And so often when we focus on relationship and the, and the simple fundamentals, then that provides that, that's what we talk about when we talk about build relationships, because, you know, when we focus on inspiring them to be their best rather than all the outside factors that are, that they're, that they're facing, if they're built well on the inside, they can face anything on the outside. And in fact, they're going to become world changers rather than being changed by the world. And, and that's, that's what we want, even at 10 years old, at eight years old. I mean, they can become world changers because they're grounded in here, especially as they become teenagers. Which really leads to the last one is build culture. So, and this is so, uh, so important and, and really sometimes it's a, it's a deep concept to teach, but, um, but let me explain it like this. So when you build relationships in your home, that's the what you're building. You are working on that connection. Culture is the how. It's, it's how you do it. It's, um, it's, it's like, think about it like this, that you are building a greenhouse in your home. And, and you think about it, if, they, if you have the right light, the right soil, the right, um, the right moisture in the plant, the plant is going to grow. And that's what our home is. When our kids come home, we need to be building them up, not tearing them down. In fact, you know, we don't have time today to go through all the elements of culture, but one of them is being an encouraging, inspiring dad versus a critical one. It's being, it, it's learning how to listen rather than always be lecturing. Learn how, to, learn how to make it their idea instead of your idea. That's what building culture is all about it because once they, when they get that, in fact, one of the ways I, I teach this is through an example, through a movie clip, actually. Um, I don't know, have you ever seen the movie um, Cinderella Man? So it's a movie a couple of, uh, about probably, I don't know, 15, 20 years old, and it has um, uh, Russell Crowe in it. And, and Russell Crowe is a, um, he is a um, boxer in the depression. And so he gets hurt and he can't work anymore. And he's kind of like your typical athlete, his star athlete. He doesn't know how to do anything else but box. And so now he's trying to find manual labor in a shipyard in the 30s. And so there's 100 people going for 10 jobs. And the scene before, he, um, he doesn't... Um, he doesn't get the work and so he's coming home and he's discouraged and he's going to this little um, house he lives in now. He used to live in a big house, now he's living in a pretty poor house and uh, he gets home and his, uh, he's got three kids. The youngest daughter greets him out and he says, uh, he says, hey, rosy cheeks, how you doing? And, and she says, uh, dad, Jay stole. Jay is the oldest boy, he says, Jay stole. And so we've all been faced with this. You know, the dad is this, he comes home, he's discouraged and the house is gonna be a disaster. You know, what, how is he going to respond to this? So he, he's like, what, you know, what happened? So he walks in this little bitty room and there's Jay. Jay is sulking over on the corner and the mom has got the, there is a, in fact, if you wanna see the video, you can look up Cinderella Man stealing sausage. And on YouTube, because you'll see it's like a three minute clip. So he, there's a sausage on the table and she's like, uh, he's, and, and the mom's exasperated. And she says, uh, I don't know what to do with Jay. Jay, what, what are you doing? Jay won't talk. And so he, so he comes into this super negative situation. And James Braddock, he, Russell Crowe says, uh, okay, boy, come with me. He just immediately commands the attention in the room and, and, and Jay's still pouting over there and he says, don't test me, boy. And you can see that that's happened before because immediately Jay responds and he, he grabs the sausage and goes with, um, goes with his dad. And so the next scene, they're in the meat shop and there's this butcher, big imposing butcher that's standing behind the counter and you see you don't hear any words but you just see jay giving him the sausage so the dad has made him go there and give the sausage back to the butcher natural consequence big imposing butcher he's got to give this to and here's where the scene really gets fun and it, and it talks about this is how the example of culture the dad walks out with the son to the sidewalk and he doesn't say a word you know, I don't, I couldn't do that. I would have been lecturing, you know, you've embarrassed the family, yada, da, 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 da. 
but um, yeah, and he just, he sits there and he kind of looks at the boy and he's taller than him, of course. And, and the boy says, um, Marty Johnson got sent away to his uncle. And, and, and now the dad's starting to realize what's happened. And he says, but he still didn't say anything. He says, why? And he says, because his family didn't have enough money. And, and so the dad, James Braddock, who used to make a ton of money, is now, you see him just angst in his face as he's realizing his son is stolen because he doesn't, he thinks he's going to get sent away and he's trying to do everything he can to keep that from happening. Mm. And so, uh, so James Braddock then goes down to his level and he says, he kind of gets down and hands on his knees and he says, I know things ain't easy, Jay, but we don't steal. We don't take what's not ours. And he even, and notice he said, we don't take, he had him identify as a family. And he said, and then he, and then he, he goes, now, I want your word that you won't steal. And he says, and, and he says, he, so he treats him like a man. And then he gets down, he actually squats like a catcher. And he goes, and I promise you, we will never send you away. And he, and he, at that time, Jay breaks and his, he, he hugs his dad. And, and, and it's like, what happened was Jay got to the heart of the matter. He didn't just work on the outside and impose his will on it. He found out the why, he listened, but he, but he didn't lower his standards. So often when dads are trying to build culture in their home, they think I have to be an easy dad. But the standard was still there. You're not going to steal. We're never going to steal in my house. It's never going to happen. But the method he used to get there was so much more effective than lecturing and berating his son. And that's what building culture is all about. It's about figuring out how to build that environment where Jay's never going to steal again because Jay's bought into the value and he bought into the trust that dad's not, I don't have to steal because I have confidence in what my dad's going to do for me. So anyway, I mean, that's just a lot. I love to go back and watch the video, but I mean, it really, that's where, that's what we teach dads is those three commitments. Pursue God with all your heart. Build relationships, not behavior. And finally, just create that greenhouse, create that culture in your home to where, and everything we do comes out of that. That's why, you know, and you can see, I mean, you know, just like you were talking about five years ago, you didn't, you didn't know near what you know today. You don't learn that in, in 15 minutes here. We learn it over, you know, we teach it in 10 minutes, but it takes 10 years to learn it. And that's why we created the base camp membership site with our ministry, because we like to be able to drip content into moms and dads over and over again, over time, and have a resource they can keep coming back to. So there you go. I mean, just, you know, I'd love to hear from the dads now. Take it over and uh, let's get them off mute and see what they want to say. Absolutely. Absolutely. So guys, I get to ask questions quite a bit. I get to record things quite a bit. So this is a time for, for you to jump in here, Jason and Mark and Robert and Joe. So feel free and uh, jump off mute. And Mark, I always call on you. Seems like to go first since you're kind of the a plus student so take her away mark <laughs> oh thanks thanks for the compliment dan yeah. um yeah i love the greenhouse picture um of the the kids and where i struggle is is that culture like how do you build that culture and that the story you told about the sausage like like i would have stopped and and just lectured and I know it, Same. it's not what I want to do, Yeah, you know, but I know that that is what would have happened. So like, how do you get yeah. there? Well, and one of the things I want to mention to you, Mark, before we go on is a lot of times people say, I'm a single parent. How can I have a crazy cool family? And we say, man, you can do it because, you know, um, and really I so admire single parents. I think it's amazing what single parents do every day. And it's just a, you know, is, does God want a healthy marriage and a family? Absolutely. And is, is it best? Yes. Mm -hmm. But man, families have to overcome things all the time. You know, Jason was looking at foster kids and all the things that get overcome yeah. there. I mean, so just well done. First of all, I just super admire. Um, but yeah. And I mean, I think, I think Mark, you know, 
that's what we try to get to is that how do you believe differently so you act differently? You know, what, yeah. what, uh, what James Braddock believed at that point is, is that he would do better by listening to his child than lecturing. That listening, he wanted to figure out the, what the real issue was and by being quiet and drawing his child out, he was going to get that. And so, you know, man, mm. I've, had, I've had to really learn that over time is it's best to go in with a question versus a lecture, you know, and, and, th and then over time, I feel like we just keep doing that. And so, you know, then I, I get hit with a situation and I go, hey, tell me more about that. You know, um, like I'll give you a quick example, you know, and this, this always freaks people out, but Suzanne was um, in the spiritual life department at a Christian school locally. And, and some of the, one of the kids broke into their parents' liquor cabinet and had a party. And so the parents came to Suzanne and are like, what do we do? You know, how much, how should we punish them? And she's like, uh, did you ask them why? Did you ask them how it felt to drink and get drunk? Did you, cause I mean, Think about it. They're in your house right now. You get to manage this situation and, and influence their belief systems about alcohol. What are you going to do mm -hmm. with that? And they were, and the parents were like, you're crazy, you know, basically. But it's that's because that's the way we believe. It's just all about connection and about finding out the why and about influencing their heart and behavior. And then it just it just works. You know, man, I like what you said there about figuring out, um, figuring out how, how to believe what you're doing. Um, my, my biggest struggle, I think, I, I ran across here a while back from a guy that was, that was, um, he was talking about living like you truly believe. You know, what, what, what would happen if you really believe the things you say you believe? And what would that mean in your life? And how would that work out? And ironically, the guy was like a psychologist. He was not like a religious guy at all. And so I, it's something I've struggled with is, you know, I say I believe these things over here, but it doesn't always work out that way in my life. A lot of times I am the guy who comes out wanting to relax or wanting to, to throw those, those things at the kids and get them to understand that's wrong and don't do that anymore. But I mean, if I look back on my life and the things I know about me and the things I know that I've done, that's not, a, I don't always live a real good life of imaging God to my kids as to what, what that looks like in, in the grace and the mercy. And, and that's a department I, I think all of us probably struggle in. I know that I do for sure. And so that's, that's been a great challenge for me. Well, and so Jason, where have you had success in living out your beliefs? Well, that's, that's been a journey. I, I grew up in a, in a really fundamentalist culture that was an unhealthy, very religious group, I guess we would call it, not very close in the spirituality. And I've been, I've been on a journey, you know, finding my way back to a, a God that actually is kind for the last couple of years. And I would say over the last several years, you know, we've, we've had a lot of experiences come to us through the kids who've come in our house uh, through the foster system. And the success i found is learning sometimes to, to sit in the moment, be still, and understand that you don't know what's going on in this kid's head. And I've started to find that success where I can approach it much more calmly. Although I still, you know, I'm not 100% I'm not successful, probably not even hit 60%, but, but that's where the biggest successes I've found are, is where I can come to the situation and search for understanding instead of trying to drop that retribution, you know, well, here's your punishment. And yeah, instead find the other side. Of it. Well, and, and what I want to say is just, you know, man, well done because you're, you're, you're in the journey. And, and, you know, I always tell the parents that it's not about, and I think our kids see this too. It's not about perfection. It's about direction. That when we, uh, when, when our kids see that we are pursuing God and we are attempting to, to travel the road, less traveled, if you will, I think they give us a lot of credit for that, you know, and they, um, I think they give us a lot of, um, of, uh, of grace as well. And I think God puts that in us. And so, um, and that's what I, you know, I look at my parenting, I think I mentioned this at the first, 
I look at it in decades. That the first, and, and I guess it's because that's how long it takes me to learn stuff. But I mean, the first decade was more um, learning the principles of my Bible and, and was very, but very judgmental in, in a way. The second was more about the spirit and, and, and learning more about relationships. And I feel like I kind of started hitting more of my stride in the third decade. That's why I guess I had to have seven kids to figure it out. And um, I was a very different parent you know, in, with my oldest daughter than I am with my youngest son, who all the, all the older kids say, it's like, oh, they, you know, he gets anything he wants, you know, y'all don't even parent him at all. And, um, but I'm like, hey, you guys are parenting him. It's all working out. <laughs> and so, but um, anyway, I just love it, you know, Jason, that you're open and honest about, man, uh, making some progress, but it's still hard. And I think that's why we keep coming back into the handball court and playing with the old guys and keep learning, you know? What do you guys like? Uh, Joe? Oh, go ahead. Uh, I'm learning than you did because I, the, the little one you see in my picture there, that that's going to be number eight. So I have more, more that I need to learn because God just keeps handing them to me. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. Hey, Don, what would you say for, for the guy that listens to this and maybe didn't have the best upbringing, maybe didn't have the best um, faith system, Christian, um, you know, father, Christian God built into him, where maybe his God, his perception of God right now, isn't that loving God, that maybe it's more of that Old Testament anger God. Maybe when he yeah. thinks about God, it's that, um, you know, person that he wants to stay out of sight. Like, I just need to duck and cover and protect myself because I know my God is an angry God, or I know that God is an angry God, not even my God, but like, but sees other people around and says, I want that. I see that. And I want that, but I don't know how to get over, get, get past this and overcome this gap. Yeah. So what's the question though? So the, the so the question is how can they uh, make some progress and, and, I, I would use the word, have a little bit of courage and step into the loving God's side of things. Like I see the God you have, and it's the same God that I picture, but my picture of, the, of that same God right. is very different than the picture you have. Yeah. And, you know, um, I think it's a fundamental, um, <laughs> fundamental, no pun intended, I guess, because a lot of times the fundamental, fundamentalists is the harsh God, you know, it, it's, um, but um, I think that, um, you know, I remember, um, I remember I had a mentor, um, because I, I think I kind of came from that background of a very performance oriented Christianity, that I needed to act right, so God would love me. And that's kind of what you're saying, right? And I remember I had a mentor, I, you know, one of the things I keep saying is go back into the handball court because go learn from people that are ahead of you. But I, I, I pursued mentors. And um, one guy in particular, I had a mentor, he just passed away last year, just a dear, dear friend of mine that I had for 20 years. And this was probably four or five years into the relationship. And I remember he gave me a cassette tape on by a guy named John Lynch, and it was on Grace. And I stuck that cassette tape into my player and I heard this guy speak to me about a God who loved me unconditionally. And I was like, no, I don't know. You know, I don't know that I buy into that deal. I mean, it feels like, um, you know, Romans 6 says, um, you know, Romans 6, 1 says that, you know, shall we go on sinning so that grace might increase by no means you know it's it's like that's kind of the way i thought if if god loves me like that it just gives a license to sin basically and that's not who god is but i was wrong god really is that and if you look at scripture i, I had a distorted view of scripture and a distorted view of grace and so when he gave me that tape it, it opened my eyes and then there was more that once I opened my eyes and that's what I love to do with crazy cool family is opening people's eyes to the value of relationship and how God really is about pursuing a relationship with us, not about having us perform to a standard. And so once that happened to me, then I started being open to that. My belief, there was a crack in my belief system 
and and that allowed that over time then i started reading more about more from john eldridge you know and i started um reading my pastor has a great book called follow the cloud his name's john stickle he's had a huge influence in my life and so you know that's what i think happens is it's just getting those mentors getting those people reading those books that are going down that path of and then allowing those cracks to become larger and larger to where the love of God can flow into your life. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. And I, I very, very much agree. It's like reach out and ask somebody. So people that you respect, people that, uh, that, you know, you know, stay in conversation with them and have them kind of help guide a little bit and get you in a spot where you can start making progress. And then the other thing I would say on that one is, Literally just ask God. Yeah. Hey, yeah. God, I'm listening. Right. Please help. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, uh, even, you know, Hebrews 4, 16 says, you know, we can approach the throne of grace, God's throne of grace with confidence. And and we, we know that he's going to, he's a throne of grace, you know, and, um, and then we flip it as we get more into the grace of God, it changes our parenting. You know, I, I ask parents sometimes, what's your throne look like? Is it a throne of grace or is it a throne of harshness? Because when we have that harsh God, and, and you can think of it too about, you know, as a father, how do we, what do we think about our kids? You know, it's like, when our one-year-old stands up doing, and falls down, do we lecture them because they haven't quite done it well enough? Or do we celebrate in their walking? You know, I think God is much more God like that. Yeah, absolutely. Had a question come in from a listener. He says, uh, his name's Matt. And Matt says, what are one or two practical ways men can connect emotionally with our spouses on a weekly cadence is the word he uses. So maybe a military guy, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> one or two ways guys can can connect weekly on a cadence, or maybe rhythm might be the word I would use with their wives. Man, one thing I would say is a, <clears throat> a great way to do that. Everybody said date night, and I'm like, that's good. But I'm saying one of the things that I like to do is to just ask inquisitive questions. You know, not more than just, you know, um, like, for example, um, we are going through, like I said, we have our, our, um, our son Maddox is 18 and, and we're having a graduation party for him this weekend. Well, guess what? My wife is stressed about it. You know, we've got all of our family coming in, which is, we love it, but it's a lot. I mean, literally there'll be 17 family members in our house and, you know, and then we're having a party and a hundred people will be there. And so it's at our house and she's getting everything ready. And so, you know, um, you know, I, my question is, is how are you feeling with all this? You know, are, are, do you like where you are with the preparations? Are you, you know, can, you know, I can ask, okay, how can I help or whatever? But really it's, it's, uh, man, um, where's your, cause, um, you know, where's your heart with all this? And th so then that opens up, it, you know, oh, it's okay. You know, cause she's, but then I'm like, well, tell me a little more about that. Well, actually, you know, I'm, I, I feel pretty good about this, but this is really stressing me out. And I, I've, I've made this yard project too much now, you know, and it's like, and all of a sudden she feels connected with, because I've just asked questions without any real agenda. You know, when she gives me all her stresses, I don't try to go fix them. You know, it's a, well, honey, if you'll just do this, you know, it's, it's actually super easy, dear. You know, if you could just do that. And um, so, you know, really just, man, I think that's a great way to build that cadence with your wife of uh, just asking the questions. Yeah. So maybe uh, to answer the weekly part is to uh, put a weekly, you know, check in on a Sunday or maybe change that into a daily. Yeah. Um, I love the idea of changing into a daily because, you know, when you do things and that's another thing, you just keep doing those little deposits. I love the daily over. Then you start to break into that deeper relationship piece of things. A measurement piece for our kids and also for our wives. If you do any research, do any Google and do any looking up the amount of time that spouses talk and connect and the amount of time that dads connect with their kids 
on a daily basis. And I think the stat was 37 seconds dads spend talking to their kids daily. Oh my the God. average length of interaction is 37 seconds. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I'm sure there's some zero days and stuff like that that's yeah. baked into that number. But, you know, outside of tablet time, outside of, you know, brush your teeth, yeah. but like actual conversation, 37 seconds. Well, and I think that leads to, you know, one of the things that when we talk about culture, culture is about values, you know, that and what's a value? It's something that's important to you. So what values are you putting in your home and what values are you not putting in your home? You know, a value can be anything. It could be like, um, like I, one of our family values is, is we love basketball. And so we have everybody in our family has played basketball. We have family basketball games. You know, I'm watching the NBA finals with my kids right now. But I mean, but that, and, but also a value can be, I want to have God conversations in my home. That's just, a, and so how do you do that? Well, you come in and you have God conversations. You know, uh, my kids remember, you know, it's, I think it's actually in our book, but I mean, they said, dad, when you came home, you know, you would tell us about, hey, I need you to pray for this deal I'm working on. Or I've got this relationship at work that I'm struggling with. And, you know, it's frustrating me because of this or whatever. And would you, you know, and, or, and just having, and so today that value has come up to where, Whenever my kids come home or whatever, there's going to be a lot of God conversations in their home because that's that's what they've known. And that's the way the culture has been built. It starts with the parents, but then the kids start to adopt it as they get older. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, these little habits that we build in the um, dinner table conversation, asking a question like, how can I pray for you today? And on a Sunday night rituals. So that's something we do in our family is we talk yeah. about, you know, what our week looks like and what's important to us and those kind of things. But putting all those little things into it, you know, around the dinner table, you know, what was a highlight of your day? What was something you had fun with? Yeah. You know, it's so funny. My, um, my daughter has two kids that are three and two. And she does that where she will say, what is the highlight of your day? And so then now she, her three-year-old is a super talker, super, you know, uh, and so she'll say, Truett, have you asked everybody about their day? And he'll say, hey, pops, what was the highlight of your day? And so she actually gets them to do it even at three years old. I mean, and, and, and so she's instilling that value in them to listen and to be, a, be uh, attentive to others. And, um, and even at three years old, she's instilling that value. And I just think it's amazing. You know, it, it is never too young. I mean, and, and as we get our kids to participate and we, we do the example first and then we encourage them to participate, those things become so natural to them. Yes. Yeah. So different than, Hey, Don, how was your day? Yeah. Yeah. And then the response is fine. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. good. Mine was too. <laughs> yeah. There was yeah. our 37 seconds. Let's move on with our lives. That's right. And it wasn't that deep either. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So yeah, th those are all great points. Well, and I I also, you know, Dan, I just think that um, like, for example, you know, you were just saying, hey, Sunday night deals or whatever. I've never been good at the consistency of things, you know. But, you know, what I think we've done a good job of is just doing it along the way. So whether you're, a, you don't have to be, I think so many that, well, I'm not disciplined enough. Okay, figure out how you do it well. And so, you know, and it doesn't have to be about every day or whatever. But it's just, you know, like I like to do it as just kind of a way of life. And, uh, but some people really like, hey, on Tuesdays, I'm going to do this. And mm -hmm. we have Thursday date night. I I've never had a consistent date night. No, but, no. But we, but we figure it out. And, you know, hey, honey, tonight we're going to go out or whatever. And so no matter where your personality is, that doesn't matter in terms of success as a dad. Something that's worked well for us, speaking of not being consistent and things like that, I'm certainly not consistent every Sunday night. But one thing I am consistent on that's kind of a rock of the week is church. Yeah. 
Occasionally we can't go to the exact time, but we'll find an alternate time that does work on Saturday or Sunday. And um, it's kind of the foundation for the week. So I know what the day looks like before church service. Yeah, I believe part of being a, a winning family is to go deep with your church. And, uh, you know, God created the church for a reason. And, um, you know, especially today, especially post-pandemic, a lot of church attendance has fallen off. Um, we, and, and not only just be, being in church, but serving in church, you know, I think that, um, you know, we've been at the same church for our entire married life. And, um, and it's, it's just been a real blessing. Baptized all my kids there. It's been a great investment. I don't mean that you have to do that. But I mean, I just think that being involved and connected in church with your family and serving with them. So often there's so many opportunities. We did children's ministry with our family. And all seven of our kids have done children's ministry because they saw mom and dad do it. That's awesome. And I love that you said serve. You went right to serve. So sometimes the question is, what are we getting out of this? Yeah, absolutely. And flip it and say, what are we giving into this? But even then, like, you know, when you go to a, to the to the um, worship service and you go to lunch afterwards, hey, man, what'd you get out of the message? You know, just having those kind of conversations, because then you instill a value in your kids of when I go to church, I listen and I'm supposed to receive something and I'm supposed to apply that to my life and change it. Okay, so now they do that, you know, and, and uh, so, you know, so that they start to instill that in their lives. And there's the habit. So that one's a really equal, easy thing. It's programmed. And yeah. then after we have a conversation, you know, and, 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 and sometimes the, during church service, not sometimes, almost every week for church service, I'll say, hey, by the way, I'll probably ask you about this right after. And I plant yeah. that seed that for the hour we're here. You may have missed a whole bunch of stuff, but that right there, that one was important. Yeah. And that's good, you know, because you're not telling them what to do. You're, you're instilling, you're asking them, you're drawing out. We talk a lot at Crazy Cool Family about drawing out your kids, drawing out your spouse. You know, <clears throat> in the Proverbs, it says that, uh, what's the verse? It says um, that the, the, uh, the man, the wise man, uh, the, 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 the depths of a heart, I can't remember the exact verse, I'll butcher this deal, but it says a man's heart are deep waters, but a wise man knows how to draw them out. And, and that's really what we do as parents a lot is we're just like James Braddock was with his child. He's drawn out the heart, he's drawn out. And, and that's when you can really have influence. That's when you can really change. That's when you can really inspire them to the standards that you want for their life. Absolutely. So I, I love those they points. They own it themselves. They own it. You know, so often we will have conversations with our kids and say, well, what do you think about that? Well, I think I should do this. And they'll tell us the right thing to do. And we'll go, that's a great idea. You know, I'm so glad you thought of that. Why don't you go implement that? You know, now they own it rather than us telling them what to do. Yeah. Yeah. So six words. Yeah. Pursue Three God. commitments. Yeah, pursue God, build relationships, create culture. It's all sitting on the site too. If you go to basecamp.crazycoolfamily.com, we have all of our videos. All, we just make it all free for everybody. You have to buy our book on Amazon. They won't let us give our book away on Amazon. But, you know, we, um, we go, if, if dads, moms go to basecamp.crazycoolfamily.com, we, we try to put everything we could there that helps you build that helps you go into that handball court and build that family. You've got a bunch of cool modules. The videos aren't all that long. Uh, yeah. So much stuff is free on that site. It's a really, really well-developed site uh, for guys that are like, why is crazy cool family? So crazy is a way of saying different. Living yeah, different. yeah. Crazy. God's ways are different. Um, they're, they're crazy. You know what they ask, you know, Elijah to do when, when, when the prophets of Baal, came to him, you know, they did, he, you know, it was totally crazy what he did. He poured water on the altar and all that stuff. And God came down with fire. Um, God's ways are just crazy. They're different, but, but you know, the real deal is, is that when you build a cool family, it's the best thing I've ever done in my life. And so that's what we like to impart back to people is, man, it does. And again, just like uh, Jason was saying, it, it, crazy and cool, maybe look different, you know, for everybody. And it's different for all seven of my kids, other than the fact that I want them to all love Jesus. 
and I want them to, to go to heaven, and I want them to be um, filled with the peace, love, and joy that God brings to us. Yep. That's a great filter to think things through that we intend to do or that we think or that we say, like run it through that peace, love, joy. Yeah. And see if it, see if it makes it out the other end. If it doesn't, you might take captive that thought or that action and, and transform it. Yeah. And in Jason's words, it also the patience and all yes. the gentleness and all the things that come with that as well. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as you're talking, you talking about change the inside, focus on the inside and my kind of closing thought. Uh, and then I'll ask you for a challenge if you want to challenge the guys. But my closing thought was this morning I was doing a, a workout and the guy leading it had battle ropes involved. I cannot stand battle ropes. You got to get your arms working and right. the weight and the length and all the stuff. And I'm like, oh man, I took a deep breath and, you know, calm myself and realize that's the next thing. I just got to do it. And as I was doing it, I thought, you know, I need to focus on my breath, the inside. And as I do that, I need to control uh, the breathing. I need to not lose my mind because I'll lose my breath. If you focus on the ropes as you're doing the ropes, it's hard and you, you lose focus on your breathing which then loses your oxygen, which then makes it way harder and you end up quitting. So I'm focused on my breathing and I'm like, oh my goodness, my arms are just working. They're just doing the thing. And, and the breathing part is the easy. Yeah. So much easier by focusing on the inside, the emotion and that versus the external feeling side of it and the how tired am I and how hard is this and those kind of questions. Where I'm like, wow, it's so easy to focus on the breathing and stay in that uh, different living. And I'm like, as I was as I was doing that, I'm thinking to myself, it's kind of like when you're living in communion with God. Yeah. Like when you got tr trouble and struggle, and you've got God with you. Like you mentioned earlier, your burden's light. That yoke is easy. And I'm like, anyway, that was my workout this morning. And as you're talking, I'm like, man, that felt like that this morning. That those were the thoughts I was having this morning. So awesome. Yeah. And you know, it's like, and, and it makes it just all of a sudden you look up and you've been doing those ropes for two or three minutes and whatever long it was. And you're like, how, how did I get here? You know, yeah. and you've, and you've gotten the success of the workout in your body now. And, um, and you didn't, it didn't even seem that hard. Yeah. Yeah. It was so much easier today than other days that I've done it because I changed and was focused on the inside. I think it, you know, it relates to the challenge I'll leave the parent and leave the dads with here is um, so often I think we make parenting a lot harder than it needs to be. Um, and I want to give you just a, a ticket to make parenting easier. And that is in our base camp, um, there is a, there's a course in there called The Power of Encouragement. And um, it's one of our values that we, in how to build culture. And, and it basically, you know, it'll tell you that we encourage extravagantly and we correct carefully. And, um, and it's, a, it's a game changer for most dads because uh, we are more critical than we are encouraging as a general rule. I mean, again, as a stereotype, if you will. And so if you wanna have some go home, and have some immediate success and immediate impact in your home. Go watch that video series. I think it's like four or five videos, about 15 minutes each video. And, but even the first one will we'll just, but go make an effort. I mean, literally in, in an hour or two, you can watch the whole course. But if you go in and be an encouraging dad, watch the impact. First, they'll think you're crazy. I mean, they'll actually think you, you, you drank some Kool-Aid and because, and, and, but, but it's amazing how encouragement will capture the heart of your child. And it's something that everyone can do immediately. It's like focusing on the breathing. All we're going to do is change the focus and become, it would just become more encouraging and, and choose to put that in your family. Watch the, do it for a week and watch how your children and your spouse responds to you. After they get over me, you being crazy. They're going to really like it. Yes, yes, absolutely. So I love that encouragement side of things. And when I see a behavior, see a thought pattern, 
it's like I pat them on the back and reward them with praise and shower them with just gratitude and just puff them up. And sure enough, they take off. They take off. Yeah, I tell parents all the time, would you rather be a critical dad or would you rather be an inspiring dad? And, th and that course will help you get a ticket to becoming a more, almost every dad would say, I am critical, but I want to be more inspiring. Okay, that course will help you really start down the road to that. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on and taking some Q&A from the audience and sharing not only what you've shared today, but also literally sharing Basecamp for free for people to jump in and check out. And your library of videos is amazing. Well, thanks. And I think the guys that are on, I mean, man, you get just so insightful and, and really, man, a couple of you guys just really on the front lines with your kids and foster kids and everything else. So, um, man, everybody's got a different journey. And, and I just encourage all the men to step into that, step into it. You know, it's worth it to, to pursue family at a high level. Well, thank you, Don. And thank you guys for joining us and asking some great questions. And until next time, check out the Crazy Cool Family Podcast and uh, look forward to you guys tuning in next week on the journey of a Christian dad. So thank you all and thank you, Don. Have a great week.